In this tutorial, I'm going to look at figures 17, 18, and 19. You'll see in Alan Strange's manual that after patch chart 19, he devotes himself exclusively to figures of the program cards and exploring different functions and setups. These three figures, 17 through 19, all have one thing in common. They explore different ways of using the inverter row of the card. 17 explores random voltages, 18 explains inverted voltages, and 19 looks at summing control voltages. Figure 17 points out that the random row covers two of the four different flavors of randomness on the easel. The first two solder holes marked A mimic, in duplicate, the first white random output on the easel faceplate. The two holes marked B to the second random output of the faceplate. Bridging the appropriate resistor conductance value to any of the vertical columns will randomize that function. For example, I'll use a 120K conductance value of 10 from random A to pulsar period and 1 to mod index. Then similarly for random B to timbre and low pass gate level 1. To access the other two flavors, C and D, of the randomness, we use the inverter row and envelope detector row on the card and the two card inputs on the faceplate. To access random C, connect a banana cable from your desired output to the two card input in the inverter section. Bridge a resistor, again I'll use a 120K, for maximum control range and bridge to mod frequency. To randomize the complex oscillator's pitch, I'll take a 120K resistor and go from the envelope detector row to pitch on the card. I will also need to attach a banana cable from random out and going to two card two next to the envelope detector. To trigger this preset, I'll use the pulsar in self mode and have it also trigger the random voltage source. This will give us a full set of randomized parameters. I've designed this card so that it will work in both mode. Have the control switch in both, midway between local and remote. Pop in the card and begin the process by setting the pulsar to self-cycle. Bringing up the volume. And I recommend taking the period up to about four. can hear how these work by just removing them. The advantage of being in both mode is that you can alter some of these switches and slider positions to get more changes. Have fun! Figure 18 describes how to set up a simple inverter patch, inverting the envelope generator's settings and sending them to the modulation index. To replicate this on the card, you need to set up the inverter on the faceplate with a couple of shorting bars, thusly. Once those are in place, Soldering up the card shown in figure 18 will render the desired effect. Figure 19 shows how you can sum two different voltages into the same input. For instance, using pressure to go to the mod index and also the preset voltage sources to go to the mod index. Remember to set up the front panel with the preset voltages going to the inverter in to card. I also noticed a typo or discrepancy between the figure 19 image and the text. In the text it says the preset voltages go to the envelope detector row, but the image shows that it's going to the inverter row. 
it doesn't matter. Either one will work just as long as you've got the card set up and the faceplate set up to the correct two card input. Here's the card with the resistors shown in figure 19 and the presets set to 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, noon, and 3 o'clock. which is quite subtle. When adding resistors or adding voltages together, uh, they can only equal 10. After 10 volts, uh, there's no more effect. I've created a card that instead of having a conductance value of 10 here and 2 here, it has a conductance value of 6 and 4, adding up to 10, which will give us a little more expressivity. With pressure, 